for the Lancers, coached by George Sahadi. At center, they will start Maurice Latham, a six foot, 250 pound junior. At the guards, Glenn Young, a 6'2", 220-pound senior, and Frank Zapsky, a 6'5", 280-pound senior. The tackles will be Jeff Seaton and John Hamby. The, t the tight end will be Ivan Bennett, and the split end will be Anthony Sahadi, the coach's son. In the backfield, at the fullback position, will be Don Johnson, a 5'8", 205-pound senior. And uh, the tailback will be Joaquin Tate, a 5'9", 170-pound senior, and he is the man to watch in the backfield. The wide receiver will be James Story, and the quarterback will be Raheem Batten, a junior. And from what we've heard about Wasim Tate, he has that great speed that uh, you would want in that tailback position, Andy. That's absolutely correct, Nort. And uh, Batten is an excellent passer. And watching him warm up out here, Nort, he looks like he's a rollout, a sprint bout passer. He has a good speed, and he would definitely be a threat to run or pass. When he was warming up, he looked like there was very few dropbacks on their warm-ups. It was mostly sprint action, uh, pass or run type of uh, challenge to the cornerback. So that's going to put a special uh, challenge for the Ugly Bearcats, a young quarterback who can sprint out there, run or, uh, run or pass, and be equally effective. And that's going to be a particularly important with Tukoski's injury. Tukoski having to come out of that secondary and be replaced, I think, tonight this afternoon's ball game by Oberski, but that puts a lot of pressure on a young man who hasn't played out there all year and get that experience to, to deal with a young quarterback who's going to do a lot of sprint outs. I don't think they've seen that in the sum. I think we play a lot more power football, and so it'll be a big challenge for the Ugly Bearcats to keep that under control. For the Ugly Bearcats, coached by Jerry Herb, they will start Eric Bismack at the center position, a 6'5", 240-pound senior. At the guards will be Jason Mychek and Tony Guza. The tackles will be Dave Maurer and Dan Maurer. Uh, one of the ends will be Mark Krubenacher, a 6'165 pound junior. The other end, we're not positive, but I think it's going to be one of the sophomores starting at that M position, either Andy Romzik or uh, Jason Badger, uh, who uh, would fill in at one of the positions. They're going to, Andy's going to pick it up in their introductions now, but we're going to know pretty soon who they're going to be. In the backfield at the quarterback position will be Jason Ruthick, a 5'10", 150-pound senior. Scott Oberski will be a fullback, a 5'11", 185-pound senior. And Perry Haleski, a junior. At the other back position, we're going to split that with Jeremy Faber, a senior, and uh, Wasiski, a sophomore for the Ugly Bearcats. As, uh, the, uh, that'll be Gene Wasuski at that other uh, halfback, and uh, they'll be splitting that duty. Okay, it is Mark Krumenacker, one of the, uh, he's at one of the ends. Did we catch the other end, Andy? <laughs> so we still aren't really sure. We won't know until they line up in their offensive formation who's going to be at the other end to replace Jeff Dukoski, who is injured. And, of course, Paul LeCure is injured and will not play for the rest of this season, no matter how far the Ugly Bearcats go. The winner of this football game gets to play the Harbor Beach Pirates next week. And uh, if it's the Ugly Bearcats, I'm sure it'll be Friday night. And if it's Harper Woods, Bishop Gallagher, it'll be up to uh, the coaches to get together and decide that one. We'll be back with the start of this football game after these messages. Plan ahead to take advantage of the Thumb Cellular Holiday Special and surprise someone with a cellular phone from Thumb Cellular. With the winter weather just around the corner, what better way to be sure that your loved one will always be safe? With a cellular phone from Thumb Cellular, help is just a phone call away. And the convenience of cellular makes everyone's life just a little easier. Thumb Cellular is offering a special you can't afford to pass up. A cellular phone and antenna for only $99.99. A savings of more than $200 off retail price. Some restrictions apply. And to add a special touch to your holiday giving, Santa will deliver your gift in person. Call Thumb Cellular for details at 1-800-443-5057. Or call an authorized agent. Thumb Cellular is located in Pigeon, just upstairs from Main Street Cafe. Plan ahead. Reserve your Thumb Cellular phone and be on the top of Santa's delivery list. 
For professional service on your car or truck, see the certified mechanics at Dunk's Garage in Ubley. Since 1956, the mechanics at Dunk's Garage have been servicing cars and trucks in the Thumb area. From major overhauls to brakes, shocks, tires, tune-ups, and oil changes, you can depend on Dunk's Garage. For the best up-to-date mechanical services for your car or truck, see the pros at Dunk's Garage at the corner of M19 and Main Street at the Light in Ubley. Call 517-658-2300. That's 517-658-2300. Mauer Meat Processors East of Ubley features custom butchering and processing. They make all their own sausage, including European sausages, bologna, and they smoke their own hams and bacon. Depend on Mauer Meat Processors for both retail and wholesale pork and beef. Look for Mauer's products in many fine stores in the Thumb area. Mauer Meat Processors located on the Purdy Road, three miles north and four and a quarter miles east of Ubley. Call 517-658-8185. That's Mauer Meat Processors, where they're ready to process your deer this coming season. Well, Andy, uh, football weather, uh, certainly, uh, with the way things have gone the last uh, few days, and uh, certainly uh, with the temperature around 30 degrees, that's going to affect the way the ball bounces today, also the way it's handled. It's going to be a lot harder football. Yes, it is. The field looks in excellent condition, Nard, here at Roseville Memorial Stadium. It's late gray skies. It's a little chilly, but uh, if the... Uh, Wind doesn't pick up much more if it's coming out of the northeast, and uh, we can keep the moisture away. I know when I left home uh, this morning, we had quite a bit of snow up there in the thumb. There's absolutely no snow on the ground here. Uh, I think it should be a good football game and pretty decent weather to play it in, North. The Albany Bearcats have uh, decided to receive to start this football game off. Deep for them uh, will be uh, 25, uh, Mike Mullet, and also Krumenacher back for the Upley Bearcats. Kicker for Bishop Gallagher is Batten. Long and over in kick. Taking over the shoulder by Mullet. Mullet up to the 10, to the 15, and he is hit. Hammered back right there. Mark it at about the 13-yard line as he tried to make his way up to the middle of the field, and he had nowhere to go. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Upley Bearcats, and they move it back to the 14, so they're backed up pretty deep in their own territory. Well, excellent coverage on the part of the Lancers. He had, as you mentioned, he had absolutely nowhere to go. It would be first and 10, and that's very good field position for the Upley Bearcats as Big Eric Besnick comes out over the ball. Right? Jason Ruthig is at the quarterback position. One of the split backs is number 35. That'll be Faber. Ruthig drops back. Gives to the first man through, and good yardage up the middle, four or five yards there by Oberski as he is hammered, but he does get to almost up to the 20. We're going to mark it as a five-yard game. Finally brought down in the secondary by Derek Kelly, number 21 for the uh, Lancers, but the excellent first play from scrimmage on Sir Coach Earp, and the Bearcats were happy with that because those first down plays are so important, North. Second and five, Second and five for the Upley Bearcats. Just underway here. The winner of this football game, of course, will play the Harbor Beach Pirates. Split to the left is Favor. Dropping back is Zuthig. He's going to throw the football, and he hits his man out in the left flat. That's Krubenacher, and he's knocked out of bounds, but it'll be an Upley Bearcat first down, a little down and out over the 25-yard line, and uh, Upley Bearcats are on the move. Well, you have to like the way Coach Herb came out. North uh, ran up the middle and then threw the little short out. He's not asking Ruthick to do too much. It was just a little out pattern, and it was completed pass, and you you'd really like that on the first play. It'll add confidence to Ruthick. First and 10 up late, just over the 25. We'll mark it on that spot. Ruthick splits Faber out to the left. Gives to the first man through, and not much there this time. Hit right away is Oberski on as he tried to go off the left side, and he gets uh, nothing and no gain on the play. No, the big Sapaski and that down lineman on the defense, he's one of their leaders offensively and defensively. Sapaski mating the tackle for the uh, Lancers that time. No gain on the play. Second down and 10 now for the Ubley Bearcats. Ruthie brings them out. Splits out to the left Faber. Everyone else is in tight. Drops back. Gives it to the second man through. And a little running room this time off the left side for Faber, I believe. See if he gets up from the bottom of the pile. And that's uh, going to be uh, 25, I believe. That was... Uh, Mullet, the ball carrier. Well, one interesting thing the Lancers do do, Nord, is a traditional 5-2, uh, but they've moved those defensive tackles maybe three or four yards off the line, so it gets a little bit confusing. But it's an interesting move on the part of Coach Sahadi, who's been coaching these uh, Lancers for over 20 years, 
if you notice the defensive tackles on some plays are three or four yards deep and uh, just an unusual look uh, for the Bearcat offensive lineman. Well, one of the ugly players has some uh, equipment problems and uh, I think the official is going to make him come out of the game and uh, make someone else come in. Yes, they do bring someone in for Maurer. Dan Maurer, one of the tackles, goes out to take care of an equipment problem. And uh, because it is a more serious equipment problem, they have to take him out of the football game. Third down and a long five or about six yards to go. Split to the left is Faber. Ruthie drops back. Gives it to his halfback. Up the middle, he has some running room. Faber going across the 50, 45, 40, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Harper Woods. A great run that time by Jeremy Faber from that halfback spot as he was winged out to the left, and he came back across on the inside, and they had a lot of room for him to run. Well, once again, we saw this last night with the Green Devils of Brown City. They were out man up front, but they did execute, and these Bearcats are doing the execution. And uh, even though the uh, Lancers have the linebackers deep, it was an excellent uh, concept, concept of the play, and Faber broke it off the right side for about 38 yards in order to 33. Korsuski is into the ball game at the wingback position now, and it's given to his fullback. Oberski looking for some running room. He bounces off one man, gets maybe one or two yards, fights his way close to the 35. They're going to move it back to the 36, so it'll be a gain of two. It'll be second and eight for the Upley Bearcats, who are on the move. Glenn Young, number 55, in on the tackle for the uh, Lancers, the Bishop Gallagher, who seem to want you to run off tackle. Now, they, when they move those defensive tackles, they're pretty deep. Uh, they're not right up on the line of scrimmage. They sort of want to attempt you to run off tackle, and uh, right now they're giving him the two or three yards there, and uh, that time the uh, Bearcats took advantage of it. They have almost everyone up on the line this time as Ruthie looks over to the defense. Gives it to his first man through, and uh, that's going to be Mullet. Mullet looking for some running room, and nothing there. He's hit right away. Yeah, just after I was talking about that loose defense, this time, North, you're absolutely right. They brought everybody but the kitchen sink up on the line of scrimmage. So a gambling Lancer defense, is, uh, there was absolutely no room to run that time uh, for the Bearcats. Well, if they could have checked off on the line like a college uh, quarterback probably would in that situation. He probably would have changed the play, Andy. Well, that's an interesting point, Nard. If he does have any audibles, it'd be a good, perfect defense to use them against because they certainly do uh, come up and they're up there again. Everyone's up on the line. Full house tee backfield and dropping back is Ruthie. He has some time. He has a man open, but he can't get it to him as he tried to get Krumenacher down deep. And if he'd have got that ball and sailed it far enough, Krumenacher was all alone, Andy. Yeah, that pass, though, in all defense of the receiver, was a little bit short, and it sort of stayed up in the air, and he had no way to come back to the ball. I don't think it was a, the young quarterback had a, Ruthick didn't get a very good uh, delivery on that football. Going to be fourth down, fourth down and nine for the Upley Bearcats, and they'll just uh, punt it away. And probably pooch it down the field as Oberski is in the punt position for them, and he'll probably try to get it down close to the goal line. They are not even thinking that he's going to punt. High snap from center, Oberski boots it off to the left side, hits on the 20 and goes inside the 20 to the 19. Not a great kick by Oberski as he tried to pooch it a little too soft, and he did not get it inside the 10, which is what he was shooting for. Right, Norton. It didn't have very much height on it as well, and uh, as you mentioned, it just went out inside the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Lancers. We'll check this uh, ugly defense out right now. Harper Woods football. We'll be back in 30 seconds. With cold weather here and winter on the way, Minden Auto Parts in the heart of Minden City has everything you need to assure a fast start for your car or truck every frosty morning. There's a complete selection of batteries, plug. Drops back the throw on the first play from a scrimmage. He gets it out to Watson Tate, and Tate is hammered and hit to the ground for a loss on the play by Dan Maurer as he came in and just knocked him to the ground. Right, and he was helped out by Krumenacher as well, but excellent play on a little screen pass on first and ten. They stopped Tate uh, dead in his tracks that time, North. They wing a lot of people out. Anthony uh, Sahadi is out way to the left, split to the right. This time is the wingback, wide receiver story. Pitch goes to Tate, Tate off the right side, gets away from one man, breaks the tackle, gets away from another man, he's finally knocked out of bounds, up over the 20-yard line, mark it on about the 25, as he got to the outside with that great speed. Dave Maurer was there to make the stop for the Bacon Bearcats, but it brings up third down and about four. Well, he bounced off about a couple of Bearcats before he was finally pushed out by Maurer, but uh, excellent run and brings up third and about four, as you mentioned, North. A lot of speed in the backfield for this Bishop Gallagher team, and it showed right there as Joaquin Tate got to the outside and just ran away from everyone. 
bit to the left this time is Story. Out to the right is Sahadi. Back in the lone back position with the fullback in front of him, Don Johnson is at the fullback, and the give is to Tate going off the left side. He breaks one tackle, gets into the open, breaks another tackle at the 30, gets away from another man, and he is hit and tackled from behind. A good play that time uh, as coming up from the secondary position to make the stop for the Upley Bearcats was Perry Haleski. And he stopped him from going all the way as he was picking his way, Andy. Yes, he was. He was juking and jiving, and he uh, got caught from behind by Haleski, but it was an excellent play. And the Ugly Bearcats are really committed to that line of scrimmage, North. They have at least 10 men within three yards of the line of scrimmage. They cover both wide receivers man-to-man, -man, and uh, there's nobody deep over the middle. Uh, they've got seven men. They've probably committed, uh, I would say, North to eight or nine men to the run here. This time, Don Johnson is split off a little bit to the left. They still have... Story out one side and Sahadi in the other side. Dropping back to give is to Tate. Tate off their left side, breaks the tackle, gets up over the 45 to the 46 to the 47, and he has about nine yards for uh, Bishop Gallagher. Tony Guza makes the stop for the Bearcats, and it's second and one. Another quick uh, play as he really shows some quickness, Andy. Yes, he does, and that's the, probably their most effective, just to have him run those straight dives, and uh, they have some big offensive linemen there to make a hole for him, and he doesn't need much of a hole as he's been very impressive on this first drive for the Lancers. Johnson doing the blocking, and Batten just dropping back and handing the ball off to Tate. Batten gets it to his fullback this time, and there's nothing there for him. They hit him right away, and Don Johnson may have even lost a foot or so. There to make the stop was Bismack, Eric Bismack from his nose guard position, and uh, there was no contest there. Loss of about uh, maybe a foot or two. We'll still mark it as third and eight. Third down, or rather third and two for the Bishop Gallagher Lancers. Big third down play. Split out to the right now is Derek Kelly. To the left, of course, is Story. Dropping out quarterback keeper, and he's going to have the ball. He gets away from one man, breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage, goes up over the 50 to the 45 to the 35, and he's tackled there finally by several of the beer caps. Dave Maurer was there to make the initial contact and knock him down, but a great move at the line by Batten, and he got away from the initial charge. Yes, he did, North, and he just took that one drop step, and he moved off that left guard, and he opened up a big hole for him, and Batten just showed some... Uh, Real fine uh, running on that play. First and 10 at the ugly 35-yard line. Batten brings him out. Latham is out over the football. He looks over the defense. Story split out to the left. He's going to throw the football. He drops back. He throws it long and deep and way over the head of Sahadi, who was split out to the left that time. Story was out to the right, and there was no contest there. No, there wasn't. And that time, Faber had a little bit of pressure for the ugly Bearcats. They're trying to uh, really go after him, and Ubley is showing a lot of quickness on the line as well, but uh, this quickness in the backfield by Batten and Tate so far has been the difference. Right, I think the best thing that uh, for Ubley Bearcats is if uh, the Lancers put it in the air, because they certainly have a dangerous ground game. Right? 4.44 to go in the first quarter. No score here from Roseville Memorial Stadium as the Ubley Bearcats play the Bishop Gallagher Lancers. This time they move Johnson out to the left as the left wing. Given to Tate. Tate gets the hole over the middle and gets away from one man and breaks the tackle and gets inside the 25. Down to the 24-yard line. Gain on the play of about 11 yards. Dan Maurer was there to make the stop for the other Bearcats, but it's another first down. And what quickness this Wasim Tate has, Andy. Right, he goes back, batting did almost like it's just a sprint draw, and he moved him right up the middle, and he had a lot of running room and a nice tackle by Maurer. First and ten, they're at the Ugly Bearcat 24-yard line. This time, Tate or Johnson moves right behind the quarterback, Batten, but off to the right is Story. He drops back. He's going to throw the football. He has the man over the middle. It's a touchdown. Grabbed there by James Story as he just did a slant across the middle of the wide receiver, and he goes in for the score, a 24-yard TD strike from Batten to Story, and what a toss that was, Andy. It sure was, Nyatt. Uh, the Bishop Gallagher Lancers take the ball from their own 19 and move in about nine plays. They move the uh, 61 yards for the touchdown, North, and uh, 
excuse me, 81 yards, and they go ahead six to nothing here, and they're going to kick the extra point, and it looks like it is good to go ahead seven to nothing. Seven to nothing, Bishop Gallagher, and we'll be back with uh, more after these messages. WMIC and WTGV Sports is presented in part by the Minden City Herald. As you begin your Christmas shopping this year... Krumenacher, Mullet are deep. Mullet gets the kick again. Comes up to the 25, 20 to 20, and he fumbled the football. And it's going to be Bishop Gallagher's football. And what a break this is. It's right on the 24-yard line as Mullet was grabbed around the arm and it pulled it right out of his hands. And it was falling on right away. Well, after that Lancer impressive drive, Nord, in the air and on the ground, uh, this is one of the worst scenarios Coach Earp could have hoped for here as this fumble is opening kickoff after the Lancers just score. And now they put him in excellent field position on the 24. First and 10 for the blue and silver. Raheem Patton. Batten brings him out. This time he wings Story out to the left, Sahadi out to the right. Looks over the defense. He drops back and he's going to throw the football again. This time he, oh, it was dropped by Sahadi. Sahadi had it in his hands out in the left wing. He might have gone all the way. Over there to cover was Jason, uh, uh, Jason uh, McCurrix, but uh, he didn't uh, really stop him from catching the football. I think he just took his eyes off it and tried to run. Well, that's right. Uh, the bat and put it right where he uh, could have caught it, right? It's right in the old bread basket, and he just dropped it. Well, one of the LB Bearcats, once again, is having an equipment problem, and they're going to try to get that taken care of. 3.40 left here in the first quarter. It's 7 nothing Bishop Gallagher, and uh, we're ready to go again. Bishop Gallagher now with a great uh, field position after the fumble on the kickoff by Mullen. For second and 10 on the 24-yard line. They tried to get it all in one shot that last time. Split to the right is Kelly. Off to the left is Sahadi. Dropping back and giving to the fullback. He has some running room. He is hit, though, and just gets a couple yards there to make the play was Dave Bauer as he rammed him to the ground, and it only goes as maybe a yard or two gain. A good defensive play of that. They haven't had too much up the middle with that fullback, Andy. Not yet, North, but they keep going back to it. It's just one of those things that eventually I'm sure Coach Sahadi would like to break, but you have to tip your hats to Dan and Dave Maurer. They played an excellent game both offensively and defensively here early in this first half. Third down and long for the Lancers. Two wide receivers out to the right. Third down and nine as they put both Sahadi and Story out to the right. Pitch goes though to Tate. Tate gets away from one man. Breaks the tackle at the 20. Goose dukes his way away from another man. The penalty flag is finally thrown into the pile of players. He gets about uh, three or four yards on the play and most of that was back and forth, Andy. Yes, it was, but you know, the young man has excellent instincts and uh, he's a dangerous man to corral and the, the, the Bearcats are going to have to do an excellent job trying to keep him within containment and they did that time as he, they had a couple of young men had a shot at him and it looks like they're going to talk it over with the Bearcats, uh, number 70 out there talking to the referees, Dave Maurer. Dave Maurer, the captain, or the defensive captain for the Upley Bearcats, and I'm sure they're going to take this one because Tate did get about seven yards. It'll only be third down and short yardage. Would have been fourth down and short yardage. A clip on the play, and they're going to walk this off from the spot of the foul. That's going to bring it back up over the 30-yard line to the 32. 33, they finally mark it. And it'll be third down and about 19. Yeah, I was thinking, North, you know, with a little time out here, that uh, the ugly Bearcats, when coming into this ball game, wanted to control the ball, and turning it over on the kickoff is not in their plan. Certainly wasn't. Bishop Gallagher decides to call timeout with a big third down play coming up for them. They lead 7 to nothing with 2.54 to go here in the first quarter. We'll be right back. The Rubel Elevators of Ubley, Snover, Cass City, and Harbor Beach would like to thank you for your business during the 1992 growing and harvesting seasons. The staff of the Rubel Elevators have continuously strived to expand and perfect their service to better serve the farmers of the Thumb area. They urge you to take all precautions and make your farming operation accident-free. Good luck to the Harbor Beach Pirates and the Ubley Bearcats in the high school football playoffs. 
When it comes to car and truck repair, you can depend on B&J Frame Shop on M19 south of Umbly. B&J Frame Shop specializes in wheel alignments, brake jobs, and major engine work. They're open daily from 8 until 5.30. Call 517-658-8131. Where else but Ubley will you find B&J Frame Shop? Carl Trepkowski and the staff at B&J Frame Shop salute the Ubley Bearcats for their great football season. Free estimates are given on collision work. Well, it's a Bishop Gallagher timeout. They have the football, and dropping back is Batten. He's going to throw. He rolls to the left. He's got some running room. Another flag thrown. Batten is hit, and finally he's taken down back on the 37-yard line. And this probably is another uh, penalty against the uh, Bishop Gallagher Lancers. Dan Bauer was in on the tackle for the Upley Bearcats, but it was just kind of a broken play, and Batten had nowhere to go. No, he likes that sprint out action, as he said at the pregame show, North, and uh, that time Mauer corralled him, but it looks like a penalty on that interior line of the uh, Lancers. We'll see if they're going to take this one. I believe they're going to refuse it because they have a long ways to go. It's going to be a holding penalty against the Lancers, and uh, they haven't... Uh, I guess they are going to refuse it. They didn't give a signal on the refusal, but they left the ball right where they had lost the RD2. It's going to be fourth down. We'll see if they go for it. Yeah, North, North Bay had to get a wave down inside the 15-yard line, so there's no reason not to decline that penalty. Uh, fourth down and a long yardage long yard to go, North. They're going to punt the football away. Back for the Lampers is Patrick Shue. He'll be doing the punting. For the Yuppie Bearcats is Jeremy Faber at one of the spots, and the other one is <laughs> Another fumble and a recovery by the Lancers, I believe. There's about five or six of them there, and the Yuppie Bearcats have made another drastic mistake, and this time it's down near their goal line. The officials are talking things over. The guys standing there with the football, and they're going to they're going to say it's Upley's football. Apparently he was down on the ground, and they took it away from him. The Krumenacher fell on the football, but uh, Ubley gets a break there. He probably should have just let that go, Andy. Yes, he should have. He tried to feel the ball, and it went right through his uh, bad bread basket. I've used that term twice here today. It'll be first and ten for the Ubley Bearcats on about their own six-yard line. Big break for the Bearcats. Let's see if they can take advantage of it and hold the football for a while. 2-11 to go, 7 to nothing. Bishop Gallagher. Dropping back, handing the football. There's another fumble. Oh, caught right back into his hands. And almost another big break. And the officials blow the whistle, but still on his feet uh, with the football was uh, Dave Maurer. And the ball was slipped into the air, and Maurer picked it off. And thank goodness for that. Right in that offensive line. The last thing he'd like to see is a football flying up in the air, but he kept his head, and he just grabbed onto it. It'll bring up second and ten for the... Ugly Bearcats, Norton. The Ugly's going to have to get off. They look a little jittery here offensively, and the, they can't afford to be. They're going to have to be a steady, consistent football team like they were all year to have any success at all here today. Bring him out as Ruthig looking over the defense as he wings the favor out to the left. Drops back, gives it to his fullback, Oberski, looking for some running room over the middle. He doesn't have too much, maybe a yard on the play. They had no gain on the last place. So that's going to bring up third down and long. They do give them a yard. Third down and nine for the Upley Bearcats. Really tough running up in the middle there. Is, uh, that's where Bishop Gallagher has a lot of their strength. They have some good young men with size and uh, some strength that Johnson from the fullback position made the tackle here defensively for Bishop Gallagher. Another uh, problem with some equipment uh, for one of the Upley Bearcat players. And the official uh, decides that everything is okay now. We're ready to get underway. Third down and nine for the Ugly Bearcats. They're backed up to their own seven-yard line. Got to get out to the 21 to get that first down. This time they bring Favor out to the left a little bit. Oberski right behind the quarterback. And the fake is to Favor, and it's given to the football. Own end. And of course, deep for Bishop Gallagher will be the speedster, Wasim Tate. Well, 
Russell stepping back with him as one of the other backs. Good play by Oberski. Oberski gets the kickoff. They should call a penalty on this. Yes. Oh, he, uh, he puts it back into his pocket. Going to say that he partially blocked it, I guess. But I don't know if he got a piece of that football or not. The official says that he thinks that uh, he did. And if he did, then it was a good call. Oh, that was close, Andy. Yes, it was. All he has to do is get a piece of the ball. He knocked Oberski flat on his back, but apparently the referee signaling that he got a piece of the football. Bad break for Ugly. They certainly would have liked to have gotten the first down any way they could. It'll be first and ten for the Lancers with excellent field position. But they did get it out of the hole slightly. It's up to the 38-yard line, and that's better than the six is where they would have had it on the fumble. First and ten for the Lancers on the Ugly 38-yard line. Five seconds to go here in this first quarter. They lead seven to nothing. Batten dropping back, giving to his fullback. Penalty flag thrown right away. He's gone. Breaks the tackle at the 10, and he's finally knocked out of bounds at about the three-yard line. But there is a penalty flag on the play, and there's that fullback, Don Johnson, busting loose for a big gainer, Andy. And high stepping over some would-be tacklers, finally gets hit down about the uh, three-yard line. The ball falls out, but the ball was, the fumble was created by the ground, and it can't be created by the ground. I see Coach uh, Earp running out on the field. There might be a injured, ugly player north that we can just barely see here from the press box. At the end of the first quarter, it's going to come back on the penalty, though, against Bishop Gallagher, and the big run by the fullback Johnson is negated. 7 to nothing, Bishop Gallagher. At the end of the first quarter, we'll be right back. Now, Palace uh, near sideline, and uh, he was shaken up on that play. He was in the secondary, made the stop on the fullback Johnson. And the five-yard walk-off against the Bishop Gallagher Lancers puts the ball back out to the 44-yard line. It'll be first and 15 for them when we get started in this second quarter. They're still waiting for the uh, trainers to take care of Palace down on the near sideline. And he looks like he's down and may be out. We talk about big calls in a football game, North, as the Ugly Bearcats have been able to scratch and scrape to stay in this football game in the first quarter, only trailing 7 to nothing. A big uh, run by Johnson, the fullback for the Lancers, bringing the ball inside the 5. We don't have that now with the penalty. It brings it up first and about 15, and the ball is on about the 43-yard uh, line, North, and that's a big change of uh, events. Dallas is still down. They're working on him down to the near end zone, and both teams have moved to the sideline in this momentary uh, stoppage of play. They do not dare get things underway with a player that is hurt uh, near the field of play. He is just off the three-yard line, and uh, we, if once we get an indication of how he is, we'll let all of you know that are listening. We have uh, ended the first quarter. Bishop Gallagher leading 7 to nothing over the Elby Bearcats. We'll be right back. For more than 15 years, the Farmers Elevators in Peck and Minden City have been the Thumb and Blue Water area's leading Purina Feeds dealer. Purina products are quality products, and at the Farmers Elevator, our service is second to none. Stop in or give us a call. We'll be happy to explain our customized feeding program that meets the needs of your farm. For guaranteed quality and superior service, depend on your Purina products dealer. The Farmers Elevators in Peck and Minden City. The Michigan Athletic and Rehabilitation Center in Cass City has available the latest in isokinetic testing. The Lido multi-joint system provides both active and passive exercise that is designed through testing to provide the patient, insurance company, physician, or employer with specific injury and job-related measurements to assist the patient to return to daily activities. The Michigan Athletic and Rehabilitation Center at Hills and Dales Hospital in Cass City is your place to go for physical therapy, sports medicine, fitness programs, and isotonic testing. Call 517-872-2084 for an appointment today. Well, you're listening to WMIC 660, Sandusky, and high school football and regional semifinal action. The Elder Bearcats against the Bishop Wood, Woods, uh, uh, rather the Harbor Woods, Bishop Gallagher Lancers. And I think that you hit it right, Andy, when you said that uh, the Ugly Bearcats uh, should feel very fortunate now. The score is only 7 to nothing after a quarter of play, and there's been some big plays on both sides. Uh, Ugly with one big play that did set up a good field position for them, but they were unable to move it in. And uh, the Lancers, of course, have hurt themselves with penalties and uh, really have uh, kept them out of the end zone. Well, the penalties are reminiscent of Harbor Beach game last night, North, where Harbor Beach just continually put themselves in, in problems early in that football game and allowed Brown City to put some points on the board. 
unfortunately for Brown, uh, Ugly here today, they haven't been able to take advantage of any of these penalties as the Lancer offense is just as dangerous as it's been touted coming into this football game. They were rated number one in this region, and you can see why offensively especially. And they've had excellent field position. I'm sure... I'm sure Coach Earp wouldn't want to be handing the ball off on their own 38 and 24. They're, you know, they don't have to go very far on any of these drives. They're going to get started again, and they have uh, taken Pallas off the field. First and 15 for Harper Woods as Batten looks them over and drops back to throw once again. He gets some pressure, throws the ball all over the field. It's knocked away right through the hands of Bennett, and he probably should have had that one as it hit him on the shoulder pad, and it goes as an incompletion. It'll be second and 15. Well, first get on the coverage, but as you mentioned, he hit the bat and hit the receiver right where it was dangerous, right in the hands, and it fell, fortunately, for the Bearcats to the ground. It'll be second and 15 from the 44-yard line of the Upley Bearcats. As this was set up by a short punt. Off to the left goes Sahadi. To the right is Story. And Tate is behind Johnson, right behind Batten, and he drops back again. Batten does the throw over the middle, and it's oh, it's almost intercepted. Good defensive play that time by Jason Mickrix as he was there to make the knock away on the pass, but it was very close to being a reception as well. Well, he almost one-handed that ball, Narks, uh, but as you mentioned, Batten really zipped that ball. It was on a line. Uh, Good defense uh, by Maastricht and uh, almost an excellent catch as well and brings up third and long and this is a key play for the Ugly Bearcats if they want to keep this uh, highly touted uh, Lancer offense off the board here in the second quarter. Just underway, 11.51 to go in the second quarter. Nine seconds, six off the clock with two pass plays. Same formation. That drops back again. He's being rushed and he is hit and dropped for a big loss. In there to make the stop for the Ugly Bearcats was Andrew Neffel. And uh, he drops him for a big last loss. Jeremy Faber was also in there for the Ugly Bearcats. Lost way back to the 50-yard uh, line. It's going to bring up a fourth down right now and 22. So they're going to have to punt the football away. Back to do the kicking once again. Big number 65 shoe and he gets it away down to the 15 fumbled there again but picked up this time by the big in for mark mark krubenacher for the ugly bearcats and he gets it out over the 20 to the 25 and knocked out of bounds there so the bearcats come out pretty good in that exchange when they started out on their own six it looked pretty bad and they did punt the ball away and uh bishop gallagher went backwards and now they have better field position andy well, you, what can you say? The Gal uh, Lancers scored when they started on their own 19. The last two times they've had the ball inside the 50-yard line of uh, the Bearcats in Bearcat territory have come up empty-handed. Let's see if the Bearcats can capitalize on it here and do what Coach Earp wanted to do with uh, without LaCrue in the backfield. Let's see if they can just hang out of the football, North. Given to the fullback, Oberski, who gets off the right side and gets some running room. Uh, and he uh, gets up over the 30 to the 32, maybe to the 33-yard line. Gain on the play of about seven. Let's go eight yards, and it's second down and two. Well, it's so important here for uh, Ugly to get develop some momentum, North, as they've been uh, playing defense here most of this early part of the football game. If they can do what Coach Earp was talking about and just contain the coldest football here for a couple first downs, I think it would be a big boost to their momentum. Wing right this time, and Faber split out that way. Fake to the first man, and given to the second man, Oberski, off the left side. This time he only gets about a yard, and uh, he's going to be short of the first down. It's going to be third down and about a yard to go for the Ugly Bearcats. Well, Bishop Gallagher really playing the run, Nord, as they put people in there, and they've got uh, all the gaps covered, and it's really difficult to run those straight dives. See if they try to do something on the outside this time as they bring the play in from the sideline. In with the play is Gene Wersiski. He'll line up at that wingback position. He split out a little bit to the left. Oberski's back in the backfield, along with Faber. Ruth drops back. He's going to throw the football. He doesn't have too much time. Throws the ball over the head of the receiver, Krumenacher, and it goes as an incompletion. And uh, it was that same little out pattern, but this time it was not very well conceived, cause, uh, conceived because Ruthie did not have any time, Andy. Oh, he didn't, and that's always important. And uh, tall James Story, the wide receiver, had excellent coverage uh, for the Gallagher Lancers on that one. Fourth down and about a yard and a half to go, and back to kick will be Oberski. 
He's had a couple high snaps he's had to go up for, but uh, he's been, this time they center it over his head. He picks it up, punches the football away, and gets it off, and it's going to go out of bounds up over the 40-yard line. There is a penalty flag on the play, and if it's against the Gallagher, Bishop Gallagher Lancers, it'll give the Ubley Bearcats a first down. We'll see what the call is. And uh, I believe it's going to be against uh, the Ubley Bearcats because they aren't uh, too happy about it. And they aren't uh, giving out any cheers. So it's going to be first down for uh, the Lancers up on the 40-yard line. Another bad snap. That's the second one that's been real high for Aberski. This time it went over his head. Yes, that's absolutely correct, Norris. And uh, Ubley has just played a, a lot of... Uh, they haven't played error-free football. And I think to have any chance in this football game... They have to play error free. Right now, they're fortunate. It's seven nothing. They're trailing the Lancers, but uh, I'm sure Coach Earp would like to at halftime talk about just being calm out there and uh, playing the fundamentals. As they've done, uh, dropped a couple punts and had some bad snaps on this punting game. First and ten, Lancers on the 40-yard line of the Ubley Bearcats. We've been here before. Split to the right is Sahadi. Out to the left is Story. Pitch goes to Tate, going around the left end. He has some running room. Gets away from one man. He's finally knocked out of bounds inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. His mullet was there to make the stop for the Ubley Bearcats, along with Oberski. But Tate does get about seven yards. We'll see where they finally set up the yardsticks, and that's what it's going to be. Second down and three for the uh, Lancers. Well, that was such a se uh, crucial series for the Ubley Bearcats. North. They had an excellent first down play but were unable to capitalize on it. And I was sort of thought that they had that first first down in that series pretty well locked up after that excellent first down uh, run. But here they are, the Lancers taking the ball once again uh, deep in ugly Bearcat territory. Split to the right is Kelly. Off to the left is Sahadi. In the backfield alone is Tate in motion. Tate to, to the right, given to the fullback, looking for some running room. He doesn't get the first down as Johnson fighting his way towards the 30-yard line, but he's pushed back by Neffel, and uh, he does not get the first down. He's going to be short of the 30 by a yard. It's going to be third down and one for uh, Bishop Gallagher. The yards are coming a little tougher against this Bearcat defense. 9-10 now to go here in the second quarter. 7 to nothing. Out to the left is Story and Sahadi as they split both receivers out to that side. High formation, dropping back. The quarterback fumbles the football, and I think the Ubley Bearcats may have gotten on it. We'll see what the call is, and it is going to be Ubley's football, I believe. We'll see. Yes, it is. Ubley Bearcat football on the 35-yard line. Oberski was there to make the play for the Ubley Bearcats. And they take over on the break at their own 35, and once again, Bishop Gallagher is kept out of the end zone. Well, that's really a key here, North. Uh, the Lancers have had the ball on the ugly 24, 38, and 40, first and 10, and have not put it in the end zone. And once again, we can always say, can the Bearcats uh, put together a few uh, first downs here as they once again take over first and 10, Ruthick coming out over the football. This time they got a five-man line. Ruthie drops back, fumbles the football, and manages to fall on it and get it himself as he went back and for some reason it popped out of his hands. He's going to lose four yards on the play. A well-conceived play, though. Looked like they might have had the receiver open off in the right flat, but uh, it goes as a loss. Well, you come into these uh, championship playoff football games, Norton, you've got to play error free, and right now the Bearcats aren't and are very fortunate to be only trailing uh, seven to nothing. Let's see if they once again second down and as you mentioned about 13 yards to go. Eight minutes left in this quarter. They trail seven to nothing as Ruthie brings them out, looks over the defense, puts the man out to the right, drops back, hands it to his halfback, and he's got some running room off the right side. That time it was Wersiski, the ball carrier, and he gets that three yards back that they lost and maybe three or four more. He's up over the 35 to the 38 yard line, and it's going to be third down and about seven for the Ubley Bearcats. Well-conceived play, and the first man is being tackled, but that second man uh, off the uh, slant is being uh, left alone, Andy. Right, and this direction seems to work pretty well for the Bearcats as they have, they're dealing with a bigger and uh, bigger offense, uh, defensive line, and uh, here we go. Wing right this time, Faber out to the right. Pitch goes to Faber. He comes back across the middle. He has the first down, I believe, up over the 45. Great cutback by Faber as he cut back at the 40 and rambled over the 45-yard line, and that's where they're going to mark it. It's first and 10 Ubley Bearcats at that spot. 
And uh, with 7.07 to go, they're on the move. Well, let's see if this generates and keeps up this momentum, Nort. Uh, I'm sure Kurt Earp and his coaching staff would like to see a couple more of those first downs and maybe put six in the end zone. We'll see what happens. Wing left this time. Out that way is Wersuski as he comes back in. Pitch goes to the left this time. Mullet looking for some running room. Breaks the tackle. Mullet gets two or three yards up to the 47, maybe to the 48-yard line. He's tripped up there, but uh, good running room once again for the Ubley Bearcats. It's going to be second down and eight. Down to the 638 mark here in this first half. 7-0. Lancers on top of the Ubley Bearcats. The winner of this football game, of course, will play the Harbor Beach Pirates. Wing left this time. Out there is Faber. Ruthick drops back. There's a reverse Faber coming to the right side. He has another first down. He's inside the 45 to the 43. And a good fake that time by Ruthick and Oberski. And they never knew that uh, Faber had the football until he had about seven yards. Well, that defense reads so well, Nord. I think any type of misdirection, whether it's a counter or, on that case, a reverse, Seems to be in uh, the Bearcats' favor, and you have to compliment those young men up front, Guza and uh, Maurer over there on the right side for excellent blocking. First and ten, Ubley Bearcats on the 43-yard line of the Lancers. Given to the fullback, Oberski breaks in the open. He's at the 35, 30, 25, and he's knocked out of bounds. Finally inside the 20 to the 17, maybe the 18-yard line. A great run by Oberski that time, right off the left tackle, and the ugly Bearcats are knocking on the door. 5.56 to go here in this first half, and they do mark it down on the 18-yard line. And it's first and ten for the Ubley Bearcats. Well, you can't say enough about these Ubley Bearcats as they've had fight here all this first half. We're in the hole three times, managed to keep the Lancers out, and now they are knocking at the door. Wing right this time, pitch right. Looking for some running room is Faber. Faber does get inside the 15, maybe to the 14, just kind of power football. It's student body right on that one, and they get about three yards on the play. The market is uh, four. It's second down and six. Well, it is ironic, North, that those misdirections set up that big run by Oberski up the middle for 25 yards to get him down here. But it's really effective to establish something. I think those misdirections establish that big run by Oberski. Is back out over the ball. Mullet is split out to the left this time. Back in the backfield of Oberski and Oberski. Given to Oberski, and he gets off the right side and almost nothing there this time. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard on the play. We'll see where they finally mark it. They mark it as about a half yard gain on the play. It's still going to be third down and six for the Ubley Bearcats. Well, maybe a time for one of those misdirections again, nor to counter or reverse off that outside, off the outside. Uh, it worked well in the beginning of the drive. One negative thing about it is to shorten the field down here as the Lancers can sort of dig in and not have to cover as much field. Well, they are bringing a lot of people up on the line of scrimmage. We'll see if they put the ball in the air this time. Ruthie. Takes the snap, he drops back, rolls left, he has some time, the ball's knocked up in the air, it goes as an incompletion. Big number 55 was there to make the play, Glenn Young, for the Lancers, and if he wouldn't have knocked that ball away, they had a man open in the corner of the end zone, and who was it? Krumenacher, the 6'165 pound junior, and would have had a quick six on that one. Well, Ubley's played tough all year. They played an excellent game against Harbor Beach, North. They lost 22-6, to but they were in that football game for most of it, and uh, they're showing the spirit that uh, brought them here. Fourth down and six, though. A big play for both teams. The Ubley Bearcats knocking on the door. Mullet is split to the right. Wierserski and Oberski are behind Ruthig. The give is to the fullback. He gets the running room. He's, Mullet is almost into the end zone. He is tripped up and falls just short of the end zone on the one-yard line. So it'll be a first down, and there's that misdirection once again, and they had everyone fooled, Andy. They sure did. As Coach Earp went to the air after running up the middle, this time coming back with the misdirection, and as you mentioned, Mullet for over 10, 13 yards, right down to the one-yard line. First and 10 for the Bearcats here against the blue-clad Lancers of Harper Woods, and let's see if the black and orange can put it in, North. Just under over four minutes now to go in this one here in the first half as Ruthie brings them out. Wing left this time. Drops back, gives it to the halfback. He was into the end zone, but there is a penalty flag thrown. And it's going to be offside against uh, Harper Woods, but it's too bad they had to have the penalty at all because that was a well-conceived play, and in favor was in the end zone, but they're going to bring it back and just walk off the half yard. 
And uh, there's a pe- there's a place uh, where the penalty actually hurts you, Andy. That's absolutely correct, Nort. Uh, as they would have put it in the end zone, it's uh, once again the Lancers committing a penalty. And uh, it's been so far in this football game, ugly committing some problems on the punting game, and uh, the Lancers committing the big penalties. And so we'll see if uh, big Eric Bismick coming up over the football, the nose of the ball right on the goal line. Less than a yard to go. Wing left this time. Mullet out to the left. Ruthie taking the snap from center, and there's the same play again. And I don't know if he got it. Yes, he got into the end zone. Jeremy Faber on a one-yard TD run for the Ugly Bearcats here in the second quarter. And the Ugly Bearcats are on the board. A very good drive uh, by the Ugly Bearcats. It certainly was, North. The Ugly Bearcats taking the ball on their own 35 and marching 11 plays for 65 yards as Faber puts it in. The Ugly Bearcats right now trailing 7-6, to six, and they are going to bring the ambulance over here to deal with the uh, young man from Ugly, and uh, there's going to be a timeout on the field, North. Uh, but that was a very important drive, the misdirection, the big run by Oberski up the middle for 25 yards, the 13-yard run by Mullet, uh, and here we have a 7-6 very good football game here in this regional semifinal from Roseville Memorial Field. Well, while they take the time out on the field to take care of the young palace uh, boy, we're going to take a time out. We'll be right back. Protect your paint from the elements and never wax again with paint guard. Our Jeremy Faber on a one-yard TD run, and that was set up by a couple big plays, including the one by Oberski as he rambled uh, down the sideline and broke one. And what a turnaround this has been in this second quarter, Andy. Well, defense wins your championships, and... uh, Right now, the Ugly Bearcats, the story of this football game, is keeping the highly touted offense of the Lancers out of the end zone. When the Lancers took the ball on the Ugly 24, they were denied. On the 38, they were denied by the Bearcats. And they were denied uh, once again when they started on the Ugly 40. And you can't say enough about that Ugly defense. And uh, here we go, Nord. Anything can happen in these football playoffs. Well, they're still uh, trying to take care of the young man over in the left corner of the end zone. The officials have gone over there to make sure that... uh, Everything is uh, taken care of, and uh, they're trying to get uh, Palace, I believe, into the ambulance. Yeah, one thing that makes it difficult for the uh, listeners is that uh, here at the field, North, they have the, the shrubbery and the uh, wire fencing are so close to the end zone, I don't think it would be safe to run a play here with the uh, ambulance practically touching the end line of the uh, football field. I think that's why we've had a delay in the action, North. Well, the players uh, continue to wait, and uh, the other Bearcats, of course, will go for two and try to take the lead in this one, uh, although they do kick the football and do have a fairly good kicker. I remember from the game we did it with the uh, Deckerville Eagles up at uh, Ubley, and uh, that might be the thing that they would like to do is, is kick the extra point, so if they do have the tie score, Andy. Yeah, you never know. Last night we saw both teams north uh continually trying for the two-point conversion and uh, I think your point is well taken and they, I'm sure that Coach Earp who, uh, would have, if he had any story to write before the ball game at halftime be uh, even up with this uh, highly touted Lancer team, uh, would be right where the ugly Bearcats would like to be as they suffered two uh, serious injuries to two starters against Bad Axe in their final and uh, came into this semifinal game a little bit banged up losing those two starters but they have uh, acquitted themselves really outstandingly here so far in this first half Bishop Gallagher, of course, is hotly favored in this one by uh, everyone that's picking football games. Uh, the other Bearcats were supposed to get beat by 20, maybe 30 points, and uh, it hasn't turned out that way, at least in this first half, with uh, 3.41 to go. 7-6, to six, we're still uh, under uh, a delay as they're waiting to clear the field of the ambulance on the near sideline. And uh, we haven't heard anything yet about uh, how the young, ugly player is, uh, uh, Palace. Uh, but uh, as soon as we do, we'll pass it on to you. And uh, he has been on the sideline for a while. And, and apparently they have decided to take him for some, uh, uh, Stan Palace have taken him for some observation uh, at an area hospital, Andy. Oh, well, that's probably correct, North. Uh, they have a blanket over him to keep him warm. And uh, it certainly is a, uh, an unfortunate sight here, uh, in this semifinal football game. It sort of takes a little bit away from the ball game, and the young men have to stand out there, but I'm sure everybody's concerned about Palace. I'm sure he'll be all right, and as soon as we hear any word, we'll certainly pass it on to the listeners. Well, it's still uh, under a delay. Uh, let's take a weather break. We're going to stop back in the studio for a 30-second spot, and we'll hear a weather break and have an update on that, and we'll come right back. Mauer Meat Processors East of Ubley features custom butchering and processing. 
They make all their own sausage, including European sausages, bologna, and they smoke their own hams and bacon. Depend on Maurer meat processors for both retail and wholesale pork and beef. Look for Maurer's products in many fine stores in the Thumb area. Maurer meat processors located on the Purdy Road, three miles north and four and a quarter miles east of Ubley. Call 517-658-8185. That's Maurer meat processors where they're ready to process your deer this coming season. The weather forecast for today calls for mostly to partly cloudy conditions with the temperatures reaching into the mid-30s, 35 to 37 degrees. Currently it's 30 degrees in downtown Sandusky. With cold weather here and winter on the way, Minden Auto Parts in the heart of Minden City has everything you need to assure a fast start for your car or truck every frosty morning. There's a complete selection of batteries, plugs, hoses, antifreeze, and much more. Check out Minden Auto Parts for great holiday gift ideas. Minden Auto Parts, 1746 Main Street, Minden City. Open Monday through Saturday, 8 till 5, Sundays 10 till 2. Call 517-864-3125 for Minden Auto Parts. Well, the Upley Bearcat spotters are right in front of us, so if we find anything out uh, from them, we'll pass it on to the listeners so that they can uh, know what's going on as they finally have uh, put the Young Palace uh, uh, young man into the ambulance and they're just about ready to move him out of the field of play and uh, he uh, was just covered up as uh, to keep him warm so it looked like he maybe uh, is being sent for x-ray so I, I don't think that it's uh, anything that's life-threatening at this time and certainly you listeners uh, can relax now and uh, he is being taken away as a precautionary uh, measure and uh, once we hear word from the assistant coaches that are up here close to us then we'll uh, pass that on to you and uh, we're sorry for the delay but uh, as Andy said it's almost impossible to continue play with the ambulance uh, in the position that they are in in the corner of the end zone because it does uh, make for a very dangerous situation the Bearcat players and the Lancer players are staying on the field this time the last time this happened the, uh, we don't have a rabbit, Andy, but we do have a lot of seagulls on the field right now. <laughs> I know that the Michigan game, where they had a little trouble with the rabbit the other day. Yeah, last week they did. Uh, the seagulls have managed to land, and they're uh, picking over this field here. I guess that uh, the gray skies uh, have attracted them here, and uh, they certainly starting to move in in force. But uh, fortunately, there goes the young palace man, the ambulance, the young boy, and. Uh, I'm sure as soon as we hear any information, we'll pass it on. The Ubley Bearcats trail 7-6 and are going for the extra point, North. 3.41 left of this one, and they're going to go for two. Out to the left is Mullet. Oferski in the backfield along with Faber. Dropping back and given to Oferski, and he does not get the extra point. He is tripped up right at the line of scrimmage there by Glenn Young, and he falls short of the end zone, and the Bearcats will trail by one right now and we'll see if the kickoff they still have time with this potent offense to get uh, some scoring in this uh, first half the Upley Bearcats will be kicking off and uh, have a little bit of a wind to their back it's, uh, it's not a real strong wind today but it's enough to make it very cold to, if you're a football fan and have to sit in the stands even in the uh, uh, booth here it's a little bit cool Andy right but it's excellent weather for duck hunting and uh, <laughs> I'm sure we have some duck hunters out there and uh, it would be a nice day for that North. well it's a good day for football if you're a player and except for your hands you usually don't get too cold on a day like this because uh, you are very active on the field Oberski will tee things up for the Upley Bearcats and we're going to get underway again with the kickoff deep for Bishop Gallagher, of course, uh, we know who is one of the young men back there. Wasim Tate, along with Derek Kelly, are the two deep men. Oberski gets the whistle from the referee and approaches the football, and here we go. Long end-over-end kick, but there must have been someone offside. And that's too bad, because they really booted that one deep. Tate took it on the five-yard line, but this is going to come back, and they're going to have to do it again. That's unfortunate for the Upley Bearcats. Right, and it's unfortunate for the delay of game as well, Nord, as I think they were just starting to fire up among themselves, had some momentum, got themselves back in the, in the football game, are only trailing 7-6 here with three and a half minutes to go in this first half, Nord, but that long delay hopefully won't affect them, and we'll see how they can manage to play defense one more time. I don't know if I want to kick that ball to Tate if I was the coach, Andy. He certainly is very quick. 
Long end over kick by Oberski again, taken by Tate at the 5, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25. He gets to the outside, and he stays in bounds. He's up to the 45, to the 50-yard line, and a great run back by Tate. And he did get away from several tacklers and brought it back 45 yards before Guza knocked him out of bounds. And uh, he's an electrifying runner, Andy. Yes, he is. He not only has good football sense, but he has excellent speed, and... Uh, he just tiptoed up this sideline, North, and started to cut back in where he was finally hemmed in and uh, brought down. But you mentioned first and ten for the Lancers on the 50-yard line. Once again, excellent field position. 3.20 to go in this one in the first half as Batten brings him out. Wings him in up.